Welcome to the Nimble American Rescue Plan webinar series. This webinar series highlights the projects funded through the American Rescue Plan. The goal of these projects is to help the nation prevent, prepare for, and respond to coronavirus public health threats. In this webinar, we'll hear from Carl Lawton from the Massachusetts Biomanufacturing Center at UMass Lowell on the project Rapid Continuous Production of mRNA vaccines. You can find additional webinars in the series on our website, www.nimble.org. And now we will turn it over to Carl. Hello, um, I'm happy to be able to share this uh, webinar with you. Uh, my team members uh, from Separagen, Vinit Saxena, and Dr. Drew Weissman from UPenn and the Institute for RNA Innovation. We're team members on this project. Uh, the challenge for industry is how do we prepare for the next uh, pandemic? Uh, we were able to find a solution for this one, uh, but we really need to be able to gear up faster wherever those uh, pandemics might originate before they hit us. Uh, BARDA is, is uh, on top of this, and they have a mission to develop a portable, continuous, end-to-end -end manufacturing system that can produce medical countermeasures, such as vaccines, on demand in compliance with good manufacturing practice. And they have an RFP out on demand manufacturing. And we'll talk about that at the end of the talk. Uh, <clears throat> So the, the idea is, is to be able to uh, get to the source of the pandemics quickly. Uh, and that's where the portability comes in. For instance, if, if, um, a if an outbreak that looks like it's gonna lead to a pandemic originated in Africa or some other country, uh, we would be able to ship these units out because they're portable, have a small footprint, and can uh, produce vaccines at the, where they're needed. In addition, uh, rather than having one central manufacturing point in the United States, we could ship these out to wherever there were hot spots. Uh, once again, it's to improve access and enable faster, cheaper, and more rapid and more flexible production of vaccines and other biologics. <clears throat> Which virus will cause the next pandemic? Well, uh, no one knows for sure. Uh, but since the COVID-19, uh, uh, there's been response to a number of other potential uh, pandemics uh, with things like Mpox, uh, Marburg virus, um, and, and a number of, of other ones. So uh, this is from BARDA, and they really want to be ready. The solution that we came up with is continuous mRNA producing machine. <clears throat> and this is an overall schematic of it. Uh, there were key tasks assigned uh, to this project. To make it work, we had to develop an mRNA purification device, an inline UV sensor, control strategies, continuous, continuous polishing purification, and ultimately, all of this needed to be integrated into one device. <clears throat> On the mRNA purification device, what we needed was a molecule, much like protein A, which can selectively uh, fish out monoclonal antibodies from a production stream. Uh, we, we designed and invented a protein that would be able to fish out mRNA. Uh, in addition, it's modified with a polyhistidine tail, and that serves two purposes, to help us purify this protein, uh, but also to help us attach it to a chromatography support. Now back to the diagram, um, the arrow is pointing to the mRNA binding, and those are two columns that are, uh, one is loaded when it reaches capacity, flow is switched over to the second column. 
The first column is washed and then eluded. The second one has filled up and then we switch back to the second. So it's alternating back and forth between these two columns. And that's what allows us to take mRNA out of the system while leaving all the reactants in the system. As they're depleted, uh, the inline UV sensor will detect that and add nucleotides to restock the reactor so that we can continuously keep running this, the uh, machine. Uh, we found through a, a lot of experiments that we really needed wide pore pores um, to get a, a large capacity for the large molecule that mRNA is. And, and so far we've settled on porous uh, perfusion chromatography. And, and from the pictures, you can see that it is quite porous. Now, this is a, a look at the immobilization chemistry, how we attached that protein I showed you earlier onto the surface of the chromatography bead. And that's where the Hiss tag comes in again. By using uh, disulfone chemistry, we can, we can easily react at pH 7 and room temperature uh, so that we don't have to worry about denaturing the protein. This is an inline UV sensor uh, that we developed that allows us to uh, measure the concentration uh, within the reactor. And as nucleotides are depleted, we can add them back into the reactor. Uh, here, it's, it's a small device uh, that measures the, the fluid content coming out of the uh, mRNA binding columns, and a signal will be sent to the system control uh, that determines how many or which amounts of NTPs need to be added. Uh, here we see the integration of all the parts uh, into the machine. So this is what uh, the first prototype looks like. This, these slides show some of the results of the experiments that we've run with the device. Uh, on the left uh, graph, uh, we, we have to be able to use this uh, mRNA binding protein uh, as many times as, as, as possible. And, and so in this experiment, we were able to reuse the resin eight times with very little fall off uh, of activity. Um, we're quite confident that we can increase that uh, to, to very many uh, cycles and also increase the amount of mRNA that binds uh, per, mill, per mill of resin. Uh, to show on the right, we have RNA gels uh, that shows that the reaction mixture, the mRNA reaction mixture that we applied to the columns and what was eluded is the same material. And in lanes two and four, you can see that they're uh, quite identical. So work outcomes, uh, what our group uh, is focusing on and, and looking to do next is there's a number of opportunities through solicitations coming out from BARDA. Uh, the first, uh, and that, uh, proposal is due next week is on-demand manufacturing and it'll be in the range of seven to 14 million dollars and and what that is is to build uh, a portable continuous end-to-end -end manufacturing system for vaccines um, so this is so we can ship them anywhere in the world and once they get into the country they need to be they need to be able to be moved to the site of where there's a potential outbreak occurring. And, and so uh, BARDA, is, that's their uh, goal is to have all this, but probably not anybody at the moment has all the necessary pieces to get this done. 
so what we would be doing is teaming with other companies. Uh, already we have a collaborators from Separagen, uh, the Institute for RNA Innovation at UPenn, UML Biomanufacturing. And then we've uh, we've talked to and are going to, going to include Infinity Fluidics that has uh, a very good uh, lipid nanoparticle encapsulation uh, technology and to be able to provide vaccines. Um, we still need collaborators for a few of the other parts of the system, uh, but we're hoping that uh, BARDA will look upon us kindly. Uh, any questions? Thank you, Carl, for the great presentation. I'm curious if you encountered any challenges and or surprises throughout the, the duration of the project. Uh, we, we did. Um, just a moment. I lost my slide. Um, <clears throat> Um, one was um, we had a, a potential supplier for the inline RNA uh, measure uh, me, uh, UV sensor uh, that backed out uh, on us due to an over a workload overload at their facility, and so we we had to recreate, we had to reinvent um, what that sensor would be, and and we I think we came up with quite an elegant simple solution for that. Um, in, in addition, uh, most chromatography beads out there are designed for proteins, and RNA is is, is quite a bit bigger. And um, in the past, resins just really haven't been designed for mRNA. So we, it, it took us a while uh, to find the one that we're currently using, and, and we think that there are better ones out there that are specifically designed for RNA. Excellent. Well, thank you for the presentation and thank you for watching our American Rescue Plan webinar series. To find additional webinars, visit www.nimble.org.